This is section 4.4, Indeterminate Forms and L'Hopital's Rule. Our first objective is to use a calculator to graphically find limits of indeterminate forms. When we're done, I want you to be able to explain what tends to happen graphically when you have the indeterminate form 0 over 0. And what do the limits of these examples represent, and why does this reinforce the definition of indeterminate forms? Prior to pulling out the calculators, we want to remember that in Chapter 2, we spent a lot of time examining and computing limits. Whenever a limit could not be found using analytical techniques, we relied on our calculators and the trace feature. We will revisit that skill here with limits that yield indeterminate forms. So what is an indeterminate form? An expression is called an indeterminate form and if, it, if it can equal different things depending on the circumstances. So the indeterminate forms you will encounter in this calculus course are 0 over 0, infinity over infinity, infinity times 0, infinity minus infinity, 0 to the 0, 1 to the infinity, or infinity to 0. So a lot of people look at these and think that they know what the answers are, but they're indeterminate because sometimes this will equal 0, sometimes this will equal infinity, sometimes it will, it will equal 2 or 4 or 1 eighth, and the same can be said for all of these. So just because you think it works like normal numbers, as soon as you put infinities in there, it starts getting things all mixed up. Same thing with zeros. So here I've got multiplying by zero doesn't always give me zero. Subtracting infinity from infinity, these infinities can be different sizes. So we have to keep all of this in mind when we're trying to compute what these indeterminate forms actually equal in specific scenarios. So what I'd like to do now is look at four different examples all of which will require us to verify that the limit yields an indeterminate form and then we'll use the trace feature on our calculator to compute the limits. So if we look at this first one, to verify that we have an indeterminate form pretty much means we're going to plug this x value that we're getting close to into the function and see what happens. So if I plug a 4 in on top I get a 0 and if I plug a 4 in on the bottom I also get a 0. Notice that this is an indeterminate form that was in that list that we had up above. The next thing we want to do is use the trace feature on the calculator to compute the limit. So if we pull up our calculator here we can see that I've got that in there and I'm just going to do a zoom 6 or a standard window. It's not quite the same as this window that we have shown here but we kind of get the same picture. We notice here at 4 that there's a hole and if I trace to 4 I'm going to get a y coordinate that is undefined. So I'm verifying that I have a hole. There's that 0 over 0. And to compute the limit, if you recall, I'm just going to trace really close to 4. So I can either trace on the left hand side or on the right hand side. If I, plus, if I go on the left, we can see that that y coordinate is getting close to 1 8. So I can say the limit as x approaches 4 of x minus 4 over x squared minus 16 is going to be one eighth. If I look at example two now, I want to verify that number one, this yields an indeterminate form. So I plug in zero, I get a sine of zero, which is zero, and a zero on the bottom. There's that indeterminate form. And then I want to use the trace feature to compute the limit. Here on the calculator, you can see that I have graphed that function in the same window. And if I trace to zero, we verify that there is a hole because I don't get a y coordinate and if I trace really close to zero it's looking like I'm approaching a y coordinate of 1 which if we recall that old limit of sine of x over x as x approaches 0 that's one of the ones that we should have memorized. Here again on example 3 I'm going to plug pi in on the top I'll get a 1 plus the cosine of pi which is 1 minus 1 which is a zero on the top and a pi minus a pi gives me a zero on the bottom. Again I've got that indeterminate form. To compute the limit now I'm going to graph it and then trace really close to pi. Here on my calculator you can see that I've graphed the function. If I trace to pi we verify a y coordinate does not exist because we're at a hole and if I trace to something really close to pi 
we get a y coordinate that is really close to zero. So we can see that that limit is going to be zero. My hope is that by doing these three examples, you see that zero over zero is sometimes one, it's sometimes zero, and it's sometimes a number that is neither of those. Thus, zero over zero will be an indeterminate form and we will have to use either analytic or graphical techniques in order to compute what it is in any given scenario. With example four, when we verify that we have an indeterminate form, we do not get zero over zero. Because if I plug zero in here, something a little bit bigger but not quite, I'm going to end up dividing two by a tiny, tiny, tiny positive number. So this is going to blow up on me because if we think graphically, this two over x would be some sort of an asymptote and I'd be heading up to positive infinity. So positive infinity plus two is still going to give me an infinity and then I'm raising to this zero power. So here is another indeterminate form and this one is a little bit different than the ones we've dealt with in the past. We can see graphically here that we're getting closer and closer from the right to this y coordinate of 1. And if I look now at my calculator and I trace super close to 0 but on the right hand side, we can see that the output is getting closer and closer and closer to 1. So we can write down that the limit as x approaches in 0 from the right of this 2 plus 2 over x to the x will be 1. So in this case I had something really big raised to 0 and it gave me a 1.